Bits. I'm glad I, I'm glad this isn't like podcast number like five or something where I'm still nervous about how I look and how it goes and you know because fuck I'm gonna be relying on you heavy. Whoa. <laughs> <coughs> Origin tone. You know what I should make with them like those right those marshmallow like rice crispy Ooh. squares. Yeah, I guess that would be good. But to be honest with you, eating them now just feels like a healthy marshmallow square. Magic Ooh. Spoon is so delicious. So I am happy and proud to bring you one of our sponsors of today's show, Magic Spoon. Go to magicspoon.com slash Tyso and use code Tyso. For $5 off any order. I know what you're thinking. Rick, you normally look so well rested and young. Oh, well, you do? We woke up early for this podcast, and also I have yet to convince Helix Mattress to send us a third mattress to you. I would say, boy, my arms are tired, but when I sleep on a Helix mattress, boy, are they well rested. And you could get one too by visiting helixsleep.com slash Tyso for up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows. If you're carrying a credit card balance month after month, it could feel like you're in a never-ending cycle of debt. Upstart can help you make final payments so you can get ahead. Find out how Upstart could lower your monthly payments today by visiting upstart.com slash Tyso. It was just from the water. No one ever says it's from I'm sick. No one mm. says that though, you know? Well, I mean, I saw you drink, so I knew what it was from. There was context to it. I wonder if it's worth animating the cup out of my hand. <laughs> hey there. Hi. How are your levels in your cans? They, they sound good. It feels like you're in the studio. I like it. Mm, try Jesus. I don't know if that is something that YouTube would flag, but if not, I'd love to hear some more. <laughs> <laughs> I think if I do more, yes. <laughs> Welcome to a special London episode of Take Your Slippers Off. If you don't know by now, my name's Rick Glassman, and as always, the incomparable Ron Funches. <laughs> you know when people do intros like that? Yeah, every time. Yeah. <laughs> One of my closest friends. There's uh, a man needs no introduction. Yeah, <laughs> how would you introduce me if this were your podcast right this now? This is my podcast, I, uh, and also today I'd be like, "This guy is uh, charmingly aggressive." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Could you say that again? Uh, I'm not sure if I was in frame. Okay, I was just trying to be charmingly aggressive, and I was just charming. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Let me hear it. No, the charmingly aggressive, uh, the tall, uh, the sweet, uh, the guy who will put, test your friendship boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just get right into it uh, to let the audience know the situation at hand. Yeah, okay. You were in Europe for you and your wife's first thing. anniversary. Yes, uh, you know, married in the midst of the pandemic, so we didn't really go and do it. Well, we did a honeymoon. We went to Santa Barbara. It didn't go well. We, I hated it. And then my wife figured out I hated it, so then she turned on me. Why'd you, you hate it? Because it was wine, not weed? Uh, Partially, probably, yeah. I just didn't know. I, I was so, I guess it was just like a lesson in the marriage because I was so into like whatever she wants, whatever she wants that I didn't think that like, oh, maybe you won't like this at all. Um, and it just was such a, I guess the only way to put it was like, it was the super white area in the wrong time to be in a super white area. Cause it was like also COVID, COVID and also last summer it was like the whole hot height of black lives matter things going on. And then when you went walking on the beach in Santa Barbara, it was the first time I'd ever seen, uh, all lives matter graffiti. I was like, this is I, who, 
walked the beach and was like, I need to let people know all lives matter. And I was like, I don't like it here. I don't want to be here at this beach. I don't want to be here at this resort. I don't like resorts in general. So my wife figured it out and then got mad at me. And so this year we went on a much better vacation. All right. So I have a question that's not as important, but I want to get it out there in case we get to it. Mm -hmm. Are you sure you don't like resorts or you haven't been to good ones? That's, I think I don't like resorts. I don't like because I feel like it's like a Disneyland that it just feels like you're trapped in a place and they're like, well, you're here now. So you got to eat our food. And unless you want to go like an hour away and everything is overpriced and usually the service isn't that great. So maybe it is the places now that I say that it's all specific. So, so you just so a resort that has good service, which they should. Yeah. And better food. And yeah. you're in. And better prices. Yeah. There's That's a, the thing. The prices at the resorts are ridiculous. It's like you staying in an airport. Um. I just watched um, uh, Captain Phillips mm -hmm. last night. Mm -hmm. And boy, are my arms tired. <laughs> and uh, that end scene, I don't want to do any spoilers, but what a... Anyway, back to you. So, resorts... I could talk more on it, but we'll get there if we need it. Yeah. Did you tell your wife that you were unhappy or that she was mad at you because she had to guess? Uh, I think it was because she had to guess. I mean, I'm easy to read, though. So it's like, because usually I'm in a very happy mood. So when I start kind of like not smiling and just like talking in short answers, she's like, no, clearly something's wrong. This is our anniversary. Why are you acting like this? And you don't want to let her know. No, because I want her to have a good time. Do you think she'll have a good time with short answers? No. Um, that sounded charmingly aggressive, just aggressive. I didn't no judgment behind it. <laughs> but really, uh, uh, the, the question, so it's not so much about you in that moment, is the idea of like, when do we tell people? Because mm -hmm. I tell people too much I'm uncomfortable. Mm. You know, when do you, how do you, what's the math? I think it's important to just let people know because they, I think the more I do it up front, the less of an issue it is because it hasn't built up. There isn't anything that uh, we're like, we're already here. You know, um, it's one of the things that my wife just told me. We had I talked to her for like an hour yesterday on the phone. And she was like, I do like that. You're like, she's like, you are always truthful. Mm -hmm. She's like one of our first um, like trips where I was going out of town and she was, we were leaving. And she's like, oh, you're going to miss me. And I was like, no, probably not because I'm going to be busy. Yeah, you told me that. <laughs> yeah. I remember we talked about that. That's right. Yeah. And she hated it at first, but now, I mean, she brought it back up. She goes like, it hurt my feelings at that point, but now I'm like, she goes, I love it because I know if you tell me yeah. you miss me, you miss me. It's like if the resort said, listen, our food's not great. Yeah. But it's expensive. Yeah. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go for three days instead of a week. Yes. Um, I've been in here for like a week by myself. I was so lonely. I wish you had asked me to. I didn't. I wish I didn't knew. I just wish I knew you were here. I would have asked to go to dinner or something with you. I didn't know you were here until. Uh, and I'm. I'm. I, I don't remember the name, but on YouTube we'll put it up here. Thank you so much, Taproot. And he. That's a long name. I wanted to give myself space. It's a, they probably couldn't tell, but it was a voiceover. <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, Funches is there," and. Yeah, you told me you've been here for so long. I mean, it was Betty's birthday not too long ago. We went out. Do you know my buddy David Sullivan? Mm -hmm, yeah. He he came here with me for a week. Mm -hmm. We love David. David's one of my best friends. He's so and if so, one of my friends had to poop, he's one of them. I just didn't want any of them to. I'm doing, I, oh, this is all I'm doing. Yeah. It would have been great. I was just in a hotel room by myself, just going through the WCW pay-per-views from the moment the NWO pre premiered. So I was just watching. We them. know. Yeah, you know what I do every day. <laughs> yes. And so, and then I was like, someone asked me to do something. And then I got three podcast requests for the for today. And I was like, no, I can't do that. For people in London asking yeah. you to do the podcast? People you don't know? Uh, Yeah, no. One through Bill, actually. So um, One through Bill. Lawrence. What podcast? I forgot it. I don't know. I didn't do it. Interesting. <laughs> I think he knows I'm here. <laughs> I actually sent, um, and I'm going to put the picture up here. I want to show it to you. Um, you know, fast forward this. Play. This picture, uh, do you know Bill's wife, Krista? Mm-hmm. I sent this to them 
and I, I said, this is uh, Bill and Krista, a Lifetime movie. <laughs> it looks enough like them, right? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, uh, scene. No, no response? No. Left on red? No. Here's the thing. Left on red is when some guy you don't know hits you up and says, you want to do my podcast? And you see it and you just, maybe you'll get back to it later. Maybe you don't want to respond. You left it on red. When it's somebody that you're friends with, they do it. They just ignored you. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I'm like, what am I, chop liver over here? I don't need you to say he's hysterical, but... You know, <laughs> you throw a ha. <laughs> yeah, which is which. Normally, I would say, don't give me nothing. If I got a ha, I'd say, give me nothing. So, mm -hmm. I, like I said, I'm just not not happy most a lot of the time. <laughs> but when I showed it to Betty, she's like, oh yeah, that's mean. And that's where I'm like, wait a minute, I'm not saying you are these people. You just say you slightly look like these people. These would be the the be your like the stand-ins for you. There's a better chance that these people are watching it than them. So yeah, no, it's sure. the other way around. Oh. They're the good looking ones. Oh. I saw a, pic, a video of Bill recently with glasses, and I was like, man, he looks ugly. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I know that thing, and I thought he looked good in them. I thought he looked, bro, I was like, I, I turned, showed it to my wife, and I was like, ooh. Look how bad he looks. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to send him this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what were you doing in, in Europe? And did you, could we talk about what you were doing here? Any specifics? Yeah, no, I was shooting a pilot for Comedy Central. Um, but it's, you know, it was like a stand up showcase. So it probably, you know, cause it's about comedy. So they probably won't make it, but we'll <laughs> <laughs> the pilot or the comedians, the, the both pilot and the comedians is funny and it's good. So we'll see if it actually goes. <laughs> all, all the comics are excited. You're in town. They see that you podcasted. They watch for that. <laughs> I told them. I told them at the time. Yeah, here's maybe a time where we could just say the presses are okay. <laughs> you said well right after uh, you went. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I I think I mean it's a good project. I think everything's good. It's just like I just watched the the channel. I'm like, well, there's no, there's 23 hours of the office going on. I don't know when they're gonna fit it right. in. Maybe they will. Hopefully. It's weird that it's not 24-hour office. I know. Like, why are you saving that hour? You love the office. I do. Yeah. Do full 24. Call it the office network. Mm hmm <laughs> <laughs> Did, uh, what is it? It's like, first, did you know that you were going to do it, or did they ask you when they found out you were in Europe? No, I knew. It was, um, it's, that's why I set my trip around. So, no, I, um, yeah, they asked me to do it a few months ago. Um, what, how does that happen? An agent calls you? My, you know, my manager calls me, and she's just like, Comedy Central's doing this comedy showcase for the there's a um a live show that they tour around here in europe and um it's pretty proper called joke thieves basically they um people do their sets and then the other comedians come back up and they try to do your set and your i used to do that with when john dewalt was doing stand-up mm -hmm. we would do each other sets yeah yeah you got it yeah, yeah it's exactly. a fun game but you yeah. have to know oh but the show is so the show is basically they see they see ron doing a set they see me doing my set, and then they see me doing you and vice versa. Exactly. Wow, right. you described it so much better than me. I think you described it well. I was, it, from this, it sounded like your manager described it poorly. <laughs> 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 um, so what is that? What is that? What is that like? Your phone rings. It's your mm -hmm. manager. Um, do you think job offer? What are you thinking when you get in a call? Uh, I mean, I just listen, and usually, you know, I've been pretty busy, so I usually just be like, mm, it if it doesn't sound fun, but I mean, one of my, I've just been kind of changing my, how I work recently, or, or why I work, and I've been really trying to make sure anything that I do recently is helpful to other people, and, um. What do you mean? Uh, I mean, I think my mindset, everything before, like when I was working on my show about myself and my son and everything, it was all about like me, and, and what i could do and what i think is my calling and now more is more about like well is there like a way i could help out even if it's just like you know whether it's like representing people or whether it's just like actually helping someone else get their idea going basically with this is like i love stand-ups i think stand-up is one of the best art forms it's one of the last like still truthful art forms you can really um still i mean a lot of people you can't say anything but you can say whatever you want as long as you have a skill set to do so and i um so anytime i get a chance to showcase stand-ups or showcase my friends I'm, I'm like yeah i'm on board so they were like 
it's basically a stand, you know, it's just a stand up showcase. I'm like, oh, I can showcase my friends. I can ask them, you know, I was able to get my friend Blair Saki booked, who like is amazing. And she was perfect for this because she has such a unique presence. And I had, it was one of the first time I'm like, you should book Blair, book Blair, I will book Blair for this. And usually every time people are like, mm, okay, no, but this time they said yes. And then they loved her and it made me feel so good. That's and that, nice. Yeah. And that's like what I want. To help other people. Yes. So they probably won't make it, but <laughs> the pilot or the comedians, the, the both pilot and the comedians. I mean, well, I you know I did my job. No, you did what you could for them. Yes, I tried. <laughs> yeah, it's, you're not going to do their act unless, <laughs> well, technically, you could have saved it yeah, if I you did their, their act. Their act. <laughs> this is part of the show. I actually could have. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, what do you? What's the feeling you think? I think it would still be flattering if you if another comedian goes up and does your act and just destroys with it mm-hmm. not because of the irony you know but just like they could do it better <laughs> right does that make you feel bad does that compliment your writing like let's say they didn't go up in front of the same audience it's too hard to to, to troubleshoot that because there's built-in subtext to it mm-hmm. but if like the, the taping was another night with a new audience and they just destroy yeah i think you would feel a little bad i think you would feel a little bad but you did see that at the tape and sometimes people would go like oh I should have wrote that tag because, you know, part of it, they'll change bits right. of it. And so the, and the people will be like, well, actually, I'm going to I'm going to you're not going to do that. So I'm going to take that. So helpful. there's a situation. I don't remember the comedian's name. I don't really know him. I think it's Brandon Walsh. That's mm-hmm. he's a comedian that mm-hmm. you probably know. Right. Is, yeah. Um, I have a long time ago. Brent tells this story often. I was on stage at the comedy store uh, doing the stuff that I would do. Uh, you know, the Sunday, Monday, three to five minute set. And I remember this time I went up and I fell asleep on stage. <laughs> like I was on the stool and <laughs> started my stuff and it probably took about 45 seconds and I fell asleep. And then, you know, ha ha ha, kind of for the first 20 seconds, if that. And then it's like, okay. And Willie Hunter came on stage. To, he was hosting to get me off and just, you know, I wouldn't get off. Uh, and I didn't let the audience get off either. <laughs> but after probably a few minutes of it, um, they decided, okay, and they brought up the next comic. And it was Brendan or Brandon? Brandon. Uh, fix it in post. And they brought up the next comic. Brendan. I had my, my joke book on the table. And he, he you know, was, you know, I was young. Mm-hmm. I, didn't, I, I think I'm doing my committing to the thing and not appreciating how much i'm getting in the other people's way yeah you, you um, realize you're being very rude <laughs> yeah charmingly disrespectful <laughs> and um because yeah, when you're in that mindset and i'm not sure if you ever get to this thing um where like the in the bad version you're unaware in the good version you're present you mm-hmm. know what i mean and like i really think it's like you know you're digging your way out of something and you think it's funny to you so you have to do it and mm-hmm. it, anyway uh, you learn, you learn. Mm-hmm. But he then was obligated to, he can't just do his set. He has to acknowledge it. And his choice for it was to open my joke book and start reading my jokes. Maybe he thought, well, oh, this will get him. I'm reading his stuff. He didn't. But he was reading stuff and at least it seemed genuine. He was laughing and the audience was laughing at it. But it, also the situation. But he goes, he, he goes, why don't you just do these? <laughs> you know, and that I remember that made me that made me feel from Brent's telling of it, not from when it happened. That made me feel, yeah, maybe I should just do jokes. I mean, it's the the, the job, yeah. Well, I, well, if you remember, I want to get into what the job is because mm-hmm. I think the job is to make people feel something, and it has to be at least funny. Why? Why are you making that face? <laughs> I mean, like, what do you want them to feel? The egotistical version of it is. Um, and I'm not saying this is first, but this did pop into my head first. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want them to feel that I'm special. You're <laughs> 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 so truthful. <laughs> and sometimes it's like, you know, it, uh, uh, doing something unique cannibalizes doing something good. Mm. Um you know, they've already made The Matrix, you know, so we have to now fall asleep in a movie. Mm-hmm. Um, now, can I say what I think it, what it is? Uh, right after we get back from work from our sponsors. Ricky, the one thing I remember 
going to America when I was younger was eating cereal and getting a huge sugar rush and then crashing in the afternoon. So much so that my mom banned us from eating American cereal. Well, there are zero grams of sugar, 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. We got frosted, peanut butter, chocolate. There's also- um, Fruity. They also have cookies and cream, maple waffle, cinnamon, and blueberry. Look at that also. High protein, keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, wheat-free, naturally flavored, totally delicious, childlike cereal for grown-ups. A lot of things free. Now, the cereal isn't free, but you could get $5 off by visiting magicspoon.com slash Tyso. Use promo code Tyso. Click the link in the description to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use promo code Tyso at checkout for $5 off any order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's matched by a 100% happiness guarantee that means if you don't like it for any reason they'll refund your money no questions asked yeah what happens in magic spoon stays in magic spoon i don't think many people are asking for their money back no but did that make sense like what happens in vegas stays in vegas yeah, like no questions of, asked sort of it did make me feel like uh they're hiding something though yeah they are hiding they're hiding the f sugar Wait a minute, no sugar it's not hidden. they're hiding the fact exist. that this is a this is a a uh, protein packed cereal so click the link below or use code Tyso for $5 off any order. Or visit magicspoon.com slash Tyso. You have such a hard time whispering. You really feel like you're pushing it out. To <gasps> save $5. Rick, there's nothing in a day I know you do more than sleeping. And we've had this conversation. Sure. It feels like an attack on me, but I love to sleep. You sleep a lot. You sleep a lot. And so I know how important a bed, a mattress, and bedding is to you. Yes. And I could confidently and honestly say that the Helix mattress is a fantastic mattress, super comfortable, and get a great night's sleep on it. For those of you who don't watch every episode of this podcast, you may have missed the fact that I was recently home in Cleveland, my arms were tired, and I asked Helix to send me a mattress there because I kept waking up with back issues. Mm. The next day, I felt better. And it also made me feel so confident in selling this product to you guys because it is such a good mattress. You also bring it up every time you're out with people, every time you're talking to people. You go online, you take the sleep quiz. It takes a minute, maybe two. I'm a side sleeper, I'm a back sleeper. I like it hot, cold, firm, etc. How tall you are, how much you weigh. And they'll recommend the mattress that's meant for you. They also have a 100-day trial that if you don't like it up to 100 nights, they will come to your door and pick up the mattress, as well as a 10-year guarantee. And Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattresses and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash Tyso. That's helixsleep.com slash Tyso for up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows. Are you looking at your credit card statements and you're saying, I, I, how am I going to? How am I going to do this? Rick, I don't even have a credit card because I'm so scared of getting into debt. Well, you're not alone. You're not because I'm here with you. But if you are alone, you're not alone. Because Upstart can help you on your path to financial freedom. Upstart is a fast and easy way to pay off debt with a personal loan all online. So you don't have to go into the bank and ask them, which is like my biggest fear, to be like, please give me money. Such a specific biggest fear to have. What I'm would that so look like? afraid of debt. I, I will um, compromise my life in order to not be in debt. I'm a bank teller. How would you ask me for a loan? I would be so afraid. I'd be like, hello, I have no money. <laughs> So unlike other lenders, Upstart considers your income and current employment to find you a smarter rate for your loan. With a five minute online rate check, you could see your rate upfront for loans between $1,000 and $50,000. Yeah, and Upstart knows you're more than just your credit score, which I think is really nice and is expanding access to affordable credit. So you don't have to be ashamed if you go in knowing that you have quite a low credit score. Find out how Upstart could lower your monthly payments today by visiting upstart.com slash Tyso. That's upstart.com slash Tyso. Please don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. A loan amount to be determined by your credit income and certain other information provided by your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash Tyso. And, and we're, we're back. back. Thank you. Um, <laughs> um, I think that your job, I mean, because I know, I mean, and I true my job, I'm going to say, because I think different comedians, their jobs are different. Like, I don't think Mark Maron's job is to go up there and be like, happy and and things but i think my job is to like help people um just have a better day yeah and feel better and if you leave my show feeling better and like you smile and you're like oh i forgot about this thing that was stressing me out or i forgot about that or you know whatever it is i i feel like then i've done my job mm -hmm. and that's just i think that's just personally for me i don't think that is like you know some people they are truth tellers they are like people who um you know 
speak truth to power and tear people down. But I think a lot of people get so caught up in like kind of also that feeling of like, oh, it's got to be special and world changing and all this type of stuff. And I just in the day, I'm like, I just want to like I me mean, even just in my life recently, you know, so many people with friends have passed. Like I just kind of really got shook up by when Trevor Moore passed. And uh, I didn't know him. I'm sorry. Oh, thank you. Um, I mean, he's a great guy. Was, I mean, and I don't want to act like we were best of friends by any means. Like we were acquaintances. We just run across each other. I knew other people in white as kids and I had worked with them on a couple of things. And, um, Timmy who, who was in the white as kids lives in Portland. And so we, we became friends and, um, he's just a really good guy and really good family man and been married for like, I think 20 years and, uh, or at least with his lady for like 20 years and had a nice kid. And he gave him, you know, right before, I mean, yeah, I mean, I will tell it because I was, I'm was i going to tell it my podcast anyway. Uh, it's like he gave me like the greatest freaking compliment right before, like right at the end. Like it wasn't even taped for the podcast. He was just telling me how like he had found out that his son was on the spectrum and uh, that, you know, he was dealing with it and that it was stressful for him. And then he'd get, you know, concerned about like, well, what does this mean for us and stuff? And then he'd say, he told me, he's like, whenever I got like real upset about it, I would think about like, well, I know Ron has a kid with autism and I know his life is good. I know that they look happy. I know mm. that his son looks well taken care of. So I feel like this, we can figure this out. And I was like, man, that's, that's like one of the best compliments I ever received. And so like when he passed, I was just like, man, I feel so bad for his family and for his son. And like, I mean, the only thing that really makes me, I'm like, man, he really, there's no doubt like, you know, his, his kid and his wife and they, they know how much he loves them and how much he did to, um, you know, help and protect and, and, and be a good man. And, um, and just also uh, bigger than that for me is just like how he lived his life. Um, just trying to create weird projects, working with his friends, working with the, he, with the same comedy sketch group that he was working with in college in, to me to never be like oh well i'm actually doing stuff and being successful now i don't have time for that or i don't like to constantly just be like this is what's fun for me so this is what i'm going to do um is like a lesson i'm trying to take right now so i just uh and just trying to work in a way that is more fun and protect my freedom a bit more um i <laughs> No, I, remember, I did a set uh, two days ago, right before we were taping the thing, and <laughs> here in London in this club, and like they don't know me at all. They're like, uh, you know, they didn't Google or do anything or do basic work. That then we, I would have turned around and promoted the fact that a guy was in, who was in movies and shows was coming to your fucking club, but I guess they didn't feel the need to, uh, and so they booked me for like this. They're like, your sets are nine ten and nine thirty. They have like it's like the comedy store upstairs, upstairs, downstairs. downstairs uh and so i was like okay that's fine that's perfect because i have to go have a thing in the morning so that'd be great if i can get back home by 10 10 30. uh they decided to bump me for like a more like local famous guy here well, i don't want to say that like he's not great he's fucking great he's really fucking funny um but so then they, my first says at 9 30 and 45 and then they're like okay we're gonna probably put you down to 10 and i was like actually i'm gonna go home now because i have a thing in the morning my schedule is tight and i gotta go and this guy just was like, what? No one drops sets here. You, this is extraordinary. That's what they kept making me like, he's going, this is extraordinary, extraordinary. And I was like, what? That sounds good. <laughs> that sounds positive to me. And he was like, nobody. He's like, you have a set. It's in like five minutes if you wait. And I was like, man, no. I go, I'm looking at my phone. This is what we agreed to. He's like, you're booked. And I was like, Mm, you know i'm not being paid i'm i know i wasn't advertised because i was upset about it uh so no i'm gonna just go home now and i'll see you and he was like oh, this is extraordinary and I, and I just go i just go well i guess i'm an extraordinary person i'll see you later and it was like i felt so good because i was like i didn't yell at him i didn't curse at him i didn't ever get aggressive but i protected myself i protected my freedoms and i was like what's the worst thing you're gonna happen i can't do your club so that's fine i'll go do something else no problem is it you know the, the the name of the club is called top secret and they never promote anybody 
Okay. Well, I mean, no, I saw them promote. No, I don't know if they don't promote anybody. I've seen them promote. Yeah. I saw it. And then also I promoted, so they could have re- just as simply hit a button to retweet it because I tagged them, but they chose not to do any of that. Uh, when you talked about doing things for other people, I wanted to acknowledge that I it's not lost on me that you went to bed at 4 a.m. and you still came and did this podcast because you know that I don't have an episode next week. We talked about it. Mm-hmm. And I do really appreciate it. Thank I, you. I texted you. Uh, as I'm sure you know, but I'm getting it out there. Uh, <laughs> what? Uh, uh, you know, normally we would just cancel. Like you didn't get to sleep, whatever. But it was like you know we have this mm-hmm. obligation to get the the wheels turning. Um, wheels turning. Engine. Uh, the donuts made. The, we the have to get butter the churning. We have to get the butter churned. Yeah. Right. But this is the butter churning, mm-hmm. uh, and then the post production is the putting it into a donut. Oh, that's gonna be tasty. <laughs> oh, I thought we were gonna be donuts. What do you? Oh, mean? I'm making <laughs> <Yeah>. donuts. <laughs> it's probably gonna be easier for it, but you know. Okay, okay, I'll be a donut. <laughs> um, well, I'm trying to um, not break any commitments as well. That's a, a thing. my wife has put that in me because I uh, mostly just again protect my freedoms. Say what you mean. Yeah. So it's like if you don't want to do it, don't say yes, so that you know you're gonna cancel later. Which is the thing I would do all the time. I go to the comedy store, cancel my set and stuff like that and i didn't realize as well that that's a little dis- disrespectful so yeah um now like i have I think the only set i canceled this year was in in la besides the one i walked <laughs> out of uh, is the only one i've canceled this year is like my wife came home a day early she hadn't been home in like two weeks and so i was like hey yeah. my wife's here i gotta i gotta cancel um and that's it because i've been trying to really be like this is what i want to do that i'm i gonna want to do it and if i commit to it I'll do it. So I even like my wife was like, why did you say yes? But she was like, you know, you're going to be tired. You know, it's not going to be good. And I was like, well, you, I said, yes, I go in. And then the same thing. I was like, well, you know how I am about my podcast. I, yeah. I you know, I left for a month, but we, we didn't miss the episode. You know? I thought about how there's a, uh, uh, like, um, this was less about your character or more about the, another person podcaster or not podcaster. But like the fact that you, when you were coming over, I thought, you know the fact that he has a podcast is probably a big reason like how you could empathize with this yeah no you know, like i you know what that's like yeah um and i know yeah if i, if I yeah if I, woke, I, yeah I wanted to cancel but then i woke up and I'm like if i did i know exactly yeah i know the feeling i'm like well i don't know do i have that now i gotta do an hour by myself yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i i have the this the commitment thing <clears throat> i when I if I break a commitment, I feel like they'll never trust me again. Mm-hmm. It's not just about that, but there is this thing of like I don't make promises uh, sometimes if I have to. But like people will say, "Do you promise?" And I, I, I even though I'll do it, like there's something that I want. I have in me that wants to be like, if I ever need to, I could be like, you know, like look at that, 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 that. It's it's not even that selfless. It's like. You know, it's like saying, I'm good for this, <laughs> uh, which keeps me from committing to things. Mm-hmm. Um, because what if I won't want to? Um, or even lesson, what if I would rather not? And <laughs> and I've got to the point to where I, I my... I mean, I guess you call it a social life, but bigger than that. I mean, oh, that sounds like a sassy 90s sitcom. What? I'd rather not? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a catchphrase that Keenan Thompson would have. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I'd rather not. And then Keenan face number six. What is the, uh, what's the show? That, what's the, the sketch that he has? Uh, you know, with Jason Sudeikis is doing Oh, that. what's up with that? Yeah, what's yeah. up with that? Yeah, it's one of my favorites. But I don't do things. Mm-hmm. I won't do things. I won't commit to things out of fear. Like, especially if it's a week out. Uh, so that I'm trying to work on committing to more the opposite of you. <laughs> You know? So you're just like I may or may not. <laughs> no, 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 no. I would say I, I will, mm-hmm. but then it's like, fucking. I know on Thursday I have to get lunch, and I know I'm gonna want lunch, but mm-hmm. I don't know if I want lunch at one. Mm-hmm. You know, and and it's uh, Sullivan has helped taught me this, and Betty has been trying for a very long time. But Sullivan is very much a. Uh, Sullivan was in Australia and flew from Gold Coast to Sydney, Sydney to LAX, LAX. Uh, that's how he was getting home. And um, he wanted to come to London with me, but I was in Cleveland first. So he went from LAX, took a car to Burbank, Burbank to Chicago, Chicago to Cleveland for two days before then flying here. Because mm. why not? 
Mm-hmm. I, I already had the ticket. I, I, once I had the ticket to come here, I'm like, what if I want to stay in Cleveland a couple more days? You know, like it just, it gets me so anxious. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, so once you've made the commitment, you're like, oh, I'm not sure if this is going to be. No, well, once I, no, that's the thing. I'm, I, I've, you know, when people, you know, uh, maybe, uh, yeah, when you're going on stage, you know, when you're first starting out, you're never really scared on stage, but you're scared when you're up next. Mm-hmm. Does that feeling yes, make sense to you? Yes. It's always, it's fine. It's anticipation. Yeah. So uh, once the plans are made, it's easier for me. Mm. I've noticed. Like once the plans are made, it's like, well, I can't cancel it. I like canceling if I can. If I like, I feel good about it if it's like important, then I'm like, I don't feel bad. I just got canceled. What do you mean if it's important? If it's, I mean, if something comes up that's important. Then you got canceled. What feels good about it? It feel. I guess I don't. Mm, power. Okay. <laughs> I want to fill up my coffee. Uh, well, uh, I want you to think of that for a second because that my admish, uh, admission of feeling special. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. Yeah, I want to hear what that is. But let me fill up my coffee real quick. Mm. The ultimate power play. I won't cut you off. Welcome back. Thank you. And the fast forward right before the welcome back, which also sounds like a Keenan Thompson catchphrase. No, I'm thinking of Keenan Thompson. Yeah, just so nervous. Like <laughs> <laughs> <Freaking> Ron Funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have uh, you see on my hands sweaty just bits bringing up uh. Keenan Thompson, but it faded a little bit. Mm-hmm. Do you ever do stand up here in London? I love doing stand up here in London. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, I, I've done I've done two shows since lockdown, mm. and it was originally. Um, fear of leaving the house mm-hmm. uh, i got my second vaccine shot uh in july mm-hmm. so then i was like i'm ready uh so i think i'm ready to do it i, I incidentally i'm talking to the guy at top secret and uh, uh <laughs> tell him i say hello mark says hello ryan says hello it's mark right yeah um and uh the only reason he canceled was because <laughs> power yes uh, that's why i walked out to feel powerful and i truly did i loved it sure because oh, so it felt validated to you well I, it was validated yeah to me it, it is i mean i again i do agree like if you make a commitment and if it was like if there is an exchange of goods if there's exchange of money then that's a contract just read a benjamin franklin biography <laughs> <laughs> Even the way so you're sitting. The deal is, you got to exchange good. <laughs> but, 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 that has no idea how he sounds. <laughs> That's not a Benjamin Franklin. That ain't. <laughs> That's a Benjamin, but. <laughs> or a Franklin. That's Franklin. Isn't uh, Franklin uh, uh, in Washington? And I remember I, I, somebody said this and I was like, that rang, rang true. Like the reason a lot of black people have the names of these presidents were because they slept with a lot of their slaves. I, I don't know. I don't. I mean, you just now? Or what do you mean? Uh, no, I don't think like Frank was Franklin a, a popular name. He wasn't a president. But what I'm no, saying I know is, what you're saying. I didn't know. I didn't know. Only read a few no, pages I knew, of the I knew he wasn't a president. <laughs> he like flies kites and stuff. He was a professional kite flyer. Franklin. Franklin. Was he a president? Or some type of invent dictator? FDR. Don't let him know. Now. Yeah, no, I, I know all about Franklin, man. I'm, I'm all, all about those Benjamin. Okay. But no, what I was saying is that like George Washington and uh, Franklin <laughs> uh, are commonly are common last names in the uh, Afro American. Oh, af- last names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last yeah. names. Yeah, yeah. Well, then yes, yes. Because like, yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Uh, so power. Mm-hmm. You love canceling. <laughs> and you, you, I mean, you can see that the point, uh, 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 and just to make it easier to hear the truth, uh, this doesn't necessarily mean why you do it or you're still this way, but that thing deep down that made you, that you're trying not to do, mm-hmm. like what is the I'm in I'm in control now type of thing. Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. Could yeah. you explain that further? Well, I just think like I'm in charge. I like to decide, and I th- maybe it comes from a source of uh, you know when I was younger, I never felt in charge. I never felt in control of things that came from a, a chaotic household. So I think having control, having that type of thing over myself, is something that's swung too far. And then now I'm finding a solid yeah. balance of like you can you know be nice, be committed, and then but I love it because like 
truly when i do something i'm fully committed like i i if i'm there i'm like you know i'm here because i want to be here yeah this is, feels like it's obvious to me but i don't think i've ever articulated it to myself but the uh the the thing that i told you where it's like i want to feel special mm -hmm. uh it, I, I I've told you this, but just reestablishing. In, when I was in school, I had I was in a, multiple special like classes. Uh, there was like some like some like underground special classes in the school too. Like there's the learning disabled, then there's like the super learning disabled, then there's the this guy's gonna go to prison type of class or mm -hmm. something. Then I ended up going to this special school. The the word special isn't lost on me there. Hmm. Uh, and I think that there's something to where like my oddity or whatever the thing that got me in those classes or not included in with friends and stuff like that i want to control like look at this thing special like i'm not like i'm 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 able to get laughs out of it or i'm able to get like i guess I, yeah it's wanting people to like me as i am that thing mm -hmm. um but i also want to I, I guess this is a bit defensive but i also want to clear up that my as a you know, adult who's been doing this for a while now, my motivation isn't that anymore. That definitely still exists. Mm -hmm. uh, um, what I have found, especially as I've been like wanting to actually say truths as opposed to just go up there and get a performance is, is that is like, I want, I guess still in, in a more selfish way, I want people to understand what this thing is. Um, I, I, I'm censoring myself with the autism talk. I don't want to be an advocate or a spokesperson for it. Mm -hmm. um, but I do very much want to be an advocate and a spokesperson for people mm -hmm. that are this thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Which isn't autism, which isn't not autism. Mm -hmm. But people who are just very misunderstood. And people know who this person is even though they don't. Yeah. And to be able to find the language to to show people, oh, he's joking, or or there's more to it than that. Mm -hmm. um, and this podcast has done that much greater than stand up, at least yet has done. Mm -hmm. And so much of my audience are people that uh, two people have gotten diagnosed from autism after watching this and realizing that's a thing. Which I can't explain what that feeling is. It's, it's it feels it I, I, it. This is corny. Uh, grateful for the platform that, like, if I could have found out earlier, yeah, you know. Absolutely. Um, but that, like, I, you know, there's a scene in the movie uh, "Fighting for My Family." Do you know the movie? Mm -hmm. Steve Page. Merchant. You're credited in um, yeah. in uh, "Fighting with My Family." Oh, with yeah. thanks. With a yeah. thanks. I remember you. You told, guys did research. Uh, yeah, you know the movie. Okay. Uh, how did you know it was Page if you didn't know the movie from the wrestler? Yeah, because the wrestler was in it. Right. So, and they were promoted on wrestling. But have you seen the movie? No. It's fantastic. Is it? Because yeah. I was like, there's wrestlers in it. I'm not going to see it. Coincidentally, last week's episode was with my friend Mercea Monroe, who is uh, Steve Merchant's, I don't know if you say partner, girl, whatever it is. But they're, and so we were talking about fighting with the family. Fuck. <laughs> I, I don't know. I know she blows him and he eats he, her ass and her pussy. I, I'm not sure what happens. <laughs> Uh, he's a pussy merchant. Yeah, he's a pussy merchant. Uh, put up a picture of a pussy merchant. <laughs> um, but coincidentally, we were talking about that. But there's a. I love it's. It's such a good movie. I've seen it so many times, and The Rock's in it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know from your Comedy Central stand-up special that you love The Rock. I love The Rock. And I know from Twitter that he at least knows that you love him. He's aware of my love for him. Put up the picture of his re re The Rock's retweet. <laughs> um, she gets up. Uh, uh, spoiler alert. Um, it, but you probably know she wins the the SmackDown of the year, whatever the event is. <laughs> That's what it's called. Yeah, SmackDown of the year. <laughs> yeah, and she goes up on the thing. Yeah, you know, it's like I'm doing this for all the weirdos and the oddballs who feel like they're alone, and but like that's mm -hmm. a much more glorious version of it. But it's so. Uh, it's so nice having like uh, as a as a performer to having like a mission statement that I that feels real. Like when I'm lost or if I don't know how these things connect, the point of all of this is. This is how people see people. Here, there's at least more layers to it. If mm -hmm. not, it's the opposite. You know what I mean? No, I agree with you. I like. Um, I mean, of course, I agree with that. I have a very one. Uh, Dan Harmon was put this term in my head that I really like. Just, um, I think it's like just celebrating neurodiversity. You know, we celebrate diversity on the outside, but ultimately, we don't 
um, comprehend that you can be just as diverse in your brain. And that doesn't mean um, whatever is considered normative to um, to, to us is right. A lot. I mean, you know, I just have my son with, with, you know, straight classic autism. There's been so many lessons, so many things about like not following traditions blindly. So many things I think a lot mm. of people are just now learning from the pandemic where they get like, oh, poof, like this break where I'm like, why was I doing that? I was just doing that out of routine. What, like hugging and handshaking? Hugging, handshaking, going to a job that you could be Zooming from yeah. or a thing, doing something for 12 hours that only takes four hours of your time mm -hmm. if you just have focus of it. Um, learning those type of things is something that my son taught me 10 years ago. Where I, and I think that's like, I don't think I would be where I am if, if he hadn't taught me like, oh, I don't have to do these things and it was just he taught me a different way to think and i think that's important and I, I think so what you do and how you you put that out there is um is definitely a, a worthy call the pandemic has made it feels like it's made it easier for people to empathize with me mm -hmm. <laughs> <sort of thing. laughs> um does that make sense though <laughs> Because they got locked in their house for a year, so now they feel they're weird too. Is that what no, is? no? Uh, like the th the rules that you say were unwritten that everyone subscribed to that I either chose not to or more realistically didn't understand and did, just didn't do. Um, as simple as why are we handshaking? As simple as I, I don't want to sit this close to you, uh, mm -hmm. or as well, I don't. We'll zoom or not do it at all. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's st here's a, a bigger one <clears throat> that more people understand, but some people still bust my balls is the is that I don't have outdoor clothes inside. Mm -hmm. um, I understand that. I just don't like that's what sometimes my wife will come in. I'm like, you smell like outside. I don't like it outside. Or is it like out walking around outside? Because well, there's a certain walking around outside that better refers to as ozone. Have mm. you heard that term for a smell? No, but I think that is it. Yeah. I just, you know, just change. Yeah, for real. Uh, I asked you to. Take your shoes off and wash your hands when you came in. Mm -hmm. Not saying that you weren't going to do either, but also not giving you the opportunity to choose not to. Mm -hmm. uh, there would have been a time that when I asked you to wa a another person to wash their hands, I would have had to do a little joke about it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that would have kind of taken away from the weird wash your hands request and said like, "Oh, Rick's comedy's weird," or "Rick's choosing to be this thing to hide mm -hmm. that." So. Both getting older and realizing I don't have to cover everything with bits, but also like my mom, I, I throw my mom under the bus a few times recently on this podcast, mm -hmm. but we love you, mom, obviously, but yeah, you're the best. she would wash her hands. She would, she would put, put soap on her hands and then just put the hand under the faucet and Wipe the, get the soap off. <laughs> let it cascade. Yeah. Um, <laughs> or I guess she would say, no, I go like this. Like it's same, you know. It, mm -hmm. it's not magic sauce you have to emulsify the dirt to the soap and rinse it off uh sullivan came over who gives a shit i'm, I'm going to tell you some more washing hands anecdotes but oh you're not now i've learned <laughs> <laughs> you know you know here's a here's a uh, here's a, a a a tool that i've learned but is very confusing and a lot to calculate mm -hmm. when somebody goes like this it doesn't mean they're not interested, but you have to at least check in with it. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes, like watching where people are looking, it gets it. It's tough. It, it's tough because then I could choose if I'm if I care about what I'm saying, I could choose to just hey, you know what I mean. But a lot of times with the hand washing thing, it's you know it's an anecdote that I got into. It's like we could cut it short, <laughs> but you know. But had you been looking at me like this, oh. I would have been like, oh, okay. and then. And then we want <laughs> and we have paper towel you know but when you go like this it's like all right he's not it do i care eh, okay and then it, <laughs> it's it's tough that's what makes stand up really hard for me because when you have a bit that you care about you just and then it's 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 self-fulfilling people then care they know you mm -hmm. care you care mm -hmm. but when you're doing it you have to rely on it um and you have to that's the, the craft right you just you fucking power through until they come back but once I see or feel the audience go like this, mm -hmm. and I'm like, yeah, I know, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> it, it's I, I'm I'm completely removed from the art and the conversation, and that's where I get I I'm I then you know you're floating. If the metaphor you're floating and you're in it, and then you just fall and pant, and that's 
That's why repeating material is very hard for me. I've never articulated that to myself. Does that make sense? Mm. Yeah, it does. I mean, no, explain it to me more. All right. Did the first part make sense? Yes. Like if you're talking to somebody, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, could you uh, appreciate? But I don't understand the, the what stops you from then repeating it and trying right. it again. So it would have been the equivalent of me. I, uh, oh, another set, perhaps, mm -hmm. until that happens again. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's. Well, you, well, you mean of course another set. You're not repeating the material in the set. What I'm saying is, the best comedians in the world are going to notice the audience go like this sometimes. Yes. But once that happens, like if I were to keep doing the the talking about the hand washing story, and in this analogy, it would be I'm on stage and the audience looked away, but I, I'm powering through with this story that I'd be repeating. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be pre I, I would be saying words, panicking, mm -hmm. not present, not performing, mm -hmm. just because what I want to do is what I just said. Mm -hmm. what I, you know, like hey, don't worry about it. Yeah, no, no, I understand that, and um, like if you get resistance and then you're you at least i don't know if you're saying this but i'm gonna say for me sometimes in the past if i got resistance on my set and people weren't into it um i would still like keep going with my plan material and but like i yeah it felt like i would just shut down and just be yeah. like well now i'm like a i'm just reciting lines i'm like an animatronic robot that they programmed and will get done as soon as the script is over and um it was actually from watching mark Marin where uh i just saw him like more and more just more experienced comic being like materials working this didn't work i'm gonna address it i'm gonna show this i'm gonna be more in the moment and i was like oh like but doesn't that i, I understand i mean th that's probably the first tool you learn like mm -hmm. that's to be present is to be present but at a certain point um you're getting in your way you're making excuses mm -hmm. right like how are you going to get this per you, you saved it this set but now you didn't get to practice the joke. Mm -hmm. At what point do you get to practice the joke if that happens? Well, I mean, if to me, if you if you've gotten, I mean, if that if it, is it that joke that people have started to, or that, was it a previous joke? Well, that, that, that's that's what's so set. That's where it, th this this is going to be so like five people are going to be like, I know exactly what they're talking <laughs> about. And that's it. They. Uh, the sense it's, yeah, but now it feels like if they're looking away, I feel like, no, but I care about this. I want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. The sensitivity to it is still, you know, comes and goes, uh, but it's pretty strong to where it's not even about this bit. It's, it's a moment that I feel that. And it's not even the audience going like this. It's me doing it. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't give a fuck about this anymore. Mm. It's the moment that happens. Mm -hmm. It's... All right. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Why am I here? Why yeah, am I wasting all of our fuck? time? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. I agree with that. But how could you care about what you're saying on the hundredth time? But for me, what I found is that's why I have to find performance pieces that I'm playing. Well, that's why I talk about what I love. Because I still care about it. I mean, when you see my sets, it's about my son. It's about my wife. It's about video games is about what because I, yeah. I can say those things that that actually is a lesson i thought pretty early in my comedy career when i'd see people um it was like when at the height of lewis black being at the like daily wow, show table yeah, he was so good mm -hmm. does he still do stand up i don't know he was so funny yeah but i'm sorry go ahead and so but you would see a lot of people being like that's what we do we rant about a subject or whatever you know and i was just like well i don't there's nothing i care about that much yeah. where i'm gonna be like rah, 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 and then the 50th time still be rah, 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 yeah. you know so i just kind of was like oh i need to it was just a thing like well, talk about what you love then because you, so you consciously love. said i need to find something i can talk about 50 times yep that's what this um explaining the language of as you and dan Harmon referred to it neurodiversity uh but like that's where that is helping me because like i all of this matters to me but it still happens in my podcast all the time. You came over uh, on the first episode right after my episode with Taryn Killam. And mm -hmm. I think we talked about this. Or mm -hmm. maybe it was right before. They were right next to each other. Did I talk to you about that? I think so. Uh, where it happened. Like I caught myself. I just, and all my equipment was breaking. Mm -hmm. And then, then 
I thought I've learned the tools, Rick. I have questions prepared. Just fucking do it. Mm-hmm. And then I asked a question about The Simpsons, a show that I care about and love that he's in. And I felt like I'm lying to him. I'm lying. He knows I'm only doing this because I'm trying to power through. And I just short circuited. Mm. And for months, I was just embarrassed anywhere I went. I have that. I know what that feels like. Could you give an example? Uh, yeah, it's when I see because now I can't even remember who is. Oh, it was when I um, met Ray Romano and called him Paul Reiser. <laughs> First and last name. Uh, no, it was more like, oh, because I had met, Hol- well, who else was on Mad About, Holly Hunter, is that her name on Mad About You? So I met her a few days prior, and so I, I was on Lights Out with Davis Bay, and, and Ray Romano was there, and I was like, oh, I just met, da 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 she's so great, da 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 and then he was like, do you think I'm Ray Romano? <laughs> Paul Reiser. <laughs> or whoever, the, and yeah. see, it's still a blind spot in me. Right. And then uh, you were embarrassed even after? Oh, I was so embarrassed. But then even partly, um, <laughs> even that I kind of felt powerful about in a way. It was like almost like the, in like the time that I was like 20 minutes late for a troll screening that I thought was just for me. And then I showed up and we found out that we'd been making Anna Kendrick wait for That's us. That's so a Ron <laughs> Funges is to think the troll screening is just for him. They didn't tell me nobody else was going to be there. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> they told you it was at eight. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the guy running the projector, you know, was going to be there. <laughs> it was true. It was, it was, that wasn't my fault. That was my manager. She was the one who was late. Uh, She's going to watch this and be like, first of all, I explained the, 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 the stand up takeover show very concisely. <laughs> <laughs> but the Anna Kendrick thing, that was on me. That's on me. Yeah, yeah, that was on her. Uh, but there's just a little bit of like, you know, I'm like, oh, I made Anna Kendrick wait. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I would love to cut to a clip of your manager being like, and by the way, make him wait. <laughs> she didn't give you the wrong time. She just told you to show up late. So being able to be like, because it's so many times, you know, that, that happens. I think that for uh, like black people in general, like black comments, a lot of times they're like, oh, are you this one or this one and that? So for me to confuse a white legend like that kind of made me feel powerful. I knew it was Ray Romano the whole damn time think he's a big shot thinks everybody loves raymond nobody loves raymond that much andy kittler was great on that show though my parents love um brad garrett oh is that tone of that voice raymond (laughs) (laughs) paul reiser andy kittler that's the jewish guy right the guy that does the i'm jewish was benjamin franklin a president was andy kittler the jewish one yeah yeah He's like in, in the third thing, you know? No. He does two things and then he does the third thing? Yes. That's the guy. It's called a Lotsi. <laughs> it is. It's, it's the rule of threes. What? <laughs> is that called? Is the, it's called a Lotsi. Really? Yeah. And I. I did not know that. I think uh, Keenan Thompson. Catchphrase again. I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess anything could be a catchphrase if you got to have that cadence. What's something that would not be a catchphrase? Um, uh, do you have any more coffee? But say it like a catchphrase. Do you have any more coffee? Yeah, that doesn't work. If you don't, if you say it not as a question. Mm-hmm. Do you have? Oh, wait, no, that's still a question. No, no, no say, say say those words the same, but don't mm-hmm. inflect up. Okay, the, the, inflect down at the end. Do you okay. have any more coffee? But inflect down on e. Do you have any more coffee? Do you have any more coffee? Do you have any more coffee? It's a catchphrase. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> yeah, I guess I think the, the catchphrase is it has to end. No, no. Yeah. Do you have any more coffee? <laughs> there is a lie that came to making me think of in Fresh Prince. You you know the show with Will Smith? Was that the show with Gina and Pam? <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Oh, he was DJ in Detroit. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't love that show? There's a scene where they get stuck in an elevator and... Uh, I don't remember what it was, but it was Will and and uh, I think Carlton was there. And Shanae. No, you're thinking of Martin. Fresh Prince is the sh- Will Smith, who we actually had on the podcast. Oh. And um, he, something is happening. I think it's a racial thing, but maybe it's just a guy being an asshole or doesn't know that Philip is a is a judge or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And they're stuck in the elevator and, and tension is building tension is building and finally the the one guy who's cool philip banks uh goes he kind of loses it on the guy uh and will who's supposed to be this alpha guy is kind of scared but so he's 
he uses uh, Uncle Uncle Phil as a buffer and stands what blah 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 and stands behind him and he goes and I will eat you alive or something like that. <laughs> Philip says and then Will kind of pops up and he about do for a snack. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, I remember that line. That's maybe oh, he about do for a snack. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. it's he about do for a snack. Okay, I think he goes down. You think he goes down? We'll see, sir. Give me that damn phone. I'm going to rip your liver out and eat it raw. That's right, boy. And he about due for a snack. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See? Or, oh, I guess you're right. <laughs> I, th I wonder if so much of what I think things are are from Fresh Prince and, Seinf and uh, Simpsons. So much of what I think a joke is mm. are from those things. I think I've talked about this on podcast, but there's a joke structure that I have since adopted uh, and played with in so many different incarnations it was I originally saw in the Simpsons and the Stonecutters episode mm -hmm. where where uh Homer says he can't admit that he's going to go to the Stonecutters with Lenny and Carl. Yeah, it's a secret. Yeah. It's so a secret society. So when they're at uh the top secret society where they never advertise who's going to be there. <laughs> and um Homer can't get caught. So when he gets up from the dinner table and Marge says, are you going to go stalk Lenny and Carl again? Homer has to think quick. So he goes, no, I'm going to stalk Lenny and Carl. <laughs> oh, like he, he did the cadence of the thing he's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. That was r obvious. So I'm saying the quiet part loud. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. the idea of like a joke could be a left turn when you know you're turning left mm -hmm. is just to go straight. Mm. And that's what my thought process is in a Lotsi, where so many people understand, well, uh, she's smart, she's kind, and she's got a fat ass. Like they know the third thing is gonna be that. Mm -hmm. So I think the way to do that is either put it second, or she's smart, she's kind, and man, is she sweet. <laughs> or what, you know, whatever, the, there's yeah. no joke there. But a lot of times, uh, uh, that deconstruction is can be confusing if the other person doesn't know the rule. Yeah, no, exactly. You got. Um, I think that's a lot of means, right? You you know so much of it. You're such an expert of it that you assume everybody else is. But I think um, I'm a fan of like to me, you do deconstruction like after you've shown construction. Yes, that's something that I learned very late. <laughs> yeah, uh, build build the thing and then take then it tear apart. it down, or else what are you tearing? You're sitting there banging at the air. People who are like, there is something to finding that common ground, though. Uh, it's not always there, and a lot of times you have to condition the audience that this is what you're doing. So mm -hmm. first, you build something and take it down, so they understand deconstruction and you a little bit the way your mind works. But there is something special when you get to deconstruct something that people already know for mm -hmm. two reasons. One, it, it it builds in a callback. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, we're, we're and two, it, 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 it there's an empathy to it. Like a subconscious, we're all, I know, we all know what he's talking about, right? Yeah, I mean, I actually, I feel like the, the rock joke was kind of like that for me, because it was like, oh, it was like, Right. Whenever I said it, people were like, oh, that's just like a collector. Like me just saying The Rock is the Beyonce for boys. People go, like, oh, that's true. Yeah. That's just the truth. And we all, and I get that. And it's, it became this more like, oh, we all collectively agree with that. But there's a punchline to that. Yeah. Which is, uh, which is, uh, you would sleep with The Rock. Yes. If you say that without the, 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 the uh, boys for Beyonce. The boys for Beyonce is still building. Mm -hmm. They get it, but the, the, there are jokes out there where you could say the punchline without the setup. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, um, and I seek those. I love those. And for a very long time, I had no idea that they didn't know that The Rock is the Beyonce for boys. Like I didn't even cross my mind. Anything I know, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, anything that I've experienced, you've experienced. <laughs> it, it wasn't like I was, yeah, it was just, it took me a very long time to figure that part out. I also feel like that that comes helpful from, from like performing overseas. Like when you. Because there's words and phrases that they might not know? Not at all. Or the things that are similar that just, you know, what you have to learn. Or um, I think. Now I'm stumbling a bit, but I think what basically the first time I went to London and did shows a couple of years ago, and it was the first time where I was like, oh, like I love to do references and do things like that, but they yeah. have to be an extra. 
They can't be the punchline. If they're the punchline, then they don't work for everybody. So I have right. to have, at a base, have a joke that I feel is just structurally sound for everyone, which is why, again, I moved more towards talking about universal themes, about like relationships, fears, things like that, where I'm like, wherever you are, everyone's still like, you know, I mean, obviously there's people who are asexual or, and I don't want to discount anyone's. And there's nothing wrong with it. Oh, 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 is that a thing we still have to say? (laughs) I'm deconstructing the thing you have to say. (laughs) We'll put their Instagram (laughs) handle up here. Uh, But, you know, to try to do things that are more worldwide and universal in nature, as opposed to just assume that everyone's had my life experience is a thing that just comes, um, a, a, a luxury and a lesson that you have from, from travel. Do you think that um, now um, having the reference be extra when you're in a place where they know the reference, it still adds to have that extra layer first? Oh yeah, it kill. It makes it um, because to me that's just like my favorite style of entertainment is when I do learn more about you. I learn more about yeah. your likes. I learn more about what you're actually interested in uh, and. Like I was actually, cause when I was trying to fall asleep last night, you know, I mean, talk the pilot. So then I was, I was like, oh, I'll be asleep by midnight. I'll be fine. What time did you get back home? I got back at well, eleven thirty, and but then I had that high and mania that comes from like when you perform, when you do, when you do a good job. I'm like, it's kind of like. So are a, you saying all the people that went on went right to sleep after? <laughs> <laughs> no, they were. I didn't say they were going to make it because of the quality. It's, oh, why not? Because of the of the format of the com- like, right, the, right, 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 right. They're out of comedy. They don't even do really. I mean, it should just be called Central, called a, a place <laughs> to visit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna see this and and be like, "Fuck Ron!" Actually, Central, a place to visit that could work. It's a good idea. <laughs> Central a place to visit so far is the best Keenan Thompson catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I got that high that I love that, you know, it's a gift when you get that type of high. I think it's one of the best feelings in the world. Well, that's a sweet way to look at it. Like mm-hmm. you can't go to sleep because of something so positive. Yeah. So that you did a good job that you did. Yeah. You put, I always put it like, oh, like I imagine it's, I mean, I've never been an athlete like that, but like, oh, I left it all on the field, you know? Yeah, that, I, that, could, I know what that's like. <laughs> and, but so I'm listening to music and, and um, uh, just listening to old rap songs from the 80s and 90s. And then this guy's like, just laying at home playing Tomb Raider. And I was like, that's the type of stuff <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love right. when people were like, oh man. It's also so specific that that not only do you get to know them, you get to picture something. Yes. It's not so broad. Yeah. Um, the uh, 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 Having the reference be a punchline, the way you found it was through going to another country. Uh, I also discovered that, not on stage though, from The Office, where they're a network comedy with so many references and subtleties, and I realized they were able to do it because those things were extras. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't understand this, there's one, the time when I noticed it, I don't remember exactly what it was. Uh, Steve Carell's character, who they've established, loves comedy, loves comedy of his time. So SNL, Steve Martin, we know that about him. So we appreciate his reference. It's not just the specific reference. It's a call to him mm-hmm. liking. It could you know, be a mm-hmm. word you've never heard of. And there was something where he was doing, uh, someone said something about Arnold Schwarzenegger. And he goes, or should have been Arnold Schwarzenegger. But instead of Arnold Schwarzenegger, he references Hans and Franz. Mm-hmm. And even if you don't know who Hans and Franz are. Yeah, just and the, it's just oh he loves the so the character the character development of it and the knowing who the person is and that's where I kind of figured that out and the office even if you don't know how smart it is or because you just don't get it or you don't you weren't part of those references whatever it might be it still works on a surface at least on a surface level mm-hmm. and there's something uh, you know you know the term A to C. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, do I need to explain the term A to C? I don't think so. It means you skip B. You skip the most logical. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I was just kidding. I know. But. Some... Well, I guess, yeah, I said you don't need to explain it, and then I explained That's it. That's why I. Yeah, yeah I but, get the joke. But A to D is even better. Mm. And A to E, oh my God. Assuming that everyone knows B, C, D. Yes. Um, before Christ did. And. Oh, yes. And. Uh, if you the 
if you do that, the way callbacks, I mean, is this okay? Yeah, it's fine. This is where I'm okay talking about it. The way you do that is either they know B, C, D, or you set up B, C, and D. Ron, put my sashes on and off on those. The uh, You set up B, C, D, so the, I could do this, please. I'm loving this. Keenan Thompson catchphrase. I'm loving this. You know, Pharrell wrote that. <laughs> He did. I'm loving it. Yeah, he co-wrote. I'm loving it. Wow, that's like well, that's a, a man. I love things like that, like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle theme song thing. I What's the that. the theme song to that? Uh, I mean, you know the theme song. What is it? Chuck Lorre wrote it, right? Heroes in a Half Shell, Turtle Power. Mm -hmm. Man, he's good. Yeah, man. They're the world's most gruesome fighting Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Did you say when gruesome they fighting team. What is it to you? I think it's fearsome. I'm doing the original comics, the 84 black <laughs> Where and they white. they were like, yeah, we're gross. Yeah. <laughs> well, gruesome. You know, the, the, the attacking and the slashing. Oh, okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, should I call an Uber now? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, uh, one to five stars. How was your trip? <laughs> he was five stars. He was chill. He was quiet. It's my favorite type of Uber. Uh, I've given a few four stars, and mm -hmm. that's when like they called me a kike. It's really hard to not give five stars on Uber. Oh, I've given them one star if I have to. Need to feel powerful. Yeah. Well, I mean, they were a dangerous driver. It's yeah, uh, dangerous drivers tough. But sometimes I say to them because I want them to give me a five star. I go, thank you so. Uh, like at the beginning, uh, you want a glass of water or whatever, and he goes, no, I'm fine. Uh, a to C. But when he offers me a glass of water, I would say, no, thank you so much. I can already tell you, five-star service. <laughs> and then he drives bad, and I have to give a five. Mm. That's where it's tough. Yeah, you can commit to it early. That's like when they ask you to tip before the delivery comes. Oof. It's tough. It's tough. You could change the tip, though. Yeah, you could change it, but I don't want to commit to a level until I know how this person's service is. I had that recently out here. I committed to a tip, and then the guy shows up, and he's like, there's no bag for my items. He just hands me the pile of items. Like, there, there's something that happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could change the That's tip. That's a good catchphrase. <laughs> something had happened. <laughs> the What's wrong? Something had happened. <laughs> yeah, there's a great example of where a catchphrase does work going yeah. up. Yeah. I think it has to be three words or less for the catchphrase to go up. Mm -hmm. And that's it has to be three words or less for the catchphrase to go up. Um, mm. I can keep it in, but. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like it goes kind of like you're just ordering food. <laughs> okay. Let's see. What's next on my set list? Wow, what did I want to? What were you saying? The A to C. You were thought of yeah. the A to C. Oh, the uh, uh, yeah, A to C. If you could, so, there's two things. If you if you want to go A to C, they either have to know what B is, or it has to work. Yes. As though they thought C was B. Yes. And that is those are such fulfilling jokes. Yeah, absolutely. Because it also as a performer, it lets you kind of perform it because you could. You could deliver C as C, or you could deliver C as B, and the people that understand it, it's even more like slow played. Mm -hmm. No, I love that. Ah, oh, oh, comedy. It, it it really is, and same with music. There's some people that could feel and see and sing and or play music a certain way. My way is very mathematical, and like. There's patterns and symmetry, and once you know it, you could break those patterns or symmetry. Mm -hmm. and it's the same with comedy, and and it's uh, you have to know the math of it to do it. But what's tough, where my obstacle has been, and that I'm getting okay at, um, is explaining the variable. The formula works. They need to know, you know, I guess for algebra, they need to know all variables but one, mm. and figuring out what's the one that's the blank and solve for x. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, yeah, I like it. It's waking me up. <laughs> I miss it, man. I'm, I'm ready to go. I, like I said, I'm just talking to Mark. I'm ready to go back uh, to stand up. Yeah, I'm excited. I just uh, taking this few weeks off to be traveling and stuff and doing that one set. I was like, man, I just want to uh, get back up and do sets, even though I don't feel like I'm like, I'm not even going on the road the rest of this year. 
So who knows? But at least I can. By do Joyce, it. you're not going on the road the rest of this year. Ah, uh, yeah, I got a job. I'm gonna be shooting a a, a show for Apple. So what I'm show? Like, uh, it doesn't have a name yet. I think, or I don't think I can say the name. One of the two. Just lip it, and we'll put it in. The Big Lebowski. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But it's a show with um, uh, Joe Kim Booster is going to be in it and Maya Rudolph. So it should be, uh, I mean, I should probably lead with Maya Rudolph. <laughs> <laughs> Maya fucking Rudolph That's is awesome. in it. And I'm in it. And so that makes me happy. Uh, and it's a pilot or is it already a series? It's picked up. Fuck yeah, man. Yeah. How many episodes? 10. Congratulations. Thank you so much. It was really helpful after, we probably should have talked about this. You Did you know I was in a slip and slide show that got canceled? because of diarrhea no that seems like something you'd be interested in we got five minutes okay i was doing uh, it was it was almost as if it was just a beautiful dream i had a gr- i was getting ready to go do this <laughs> independent movie for way less money can i pitch you a quick joke to do it and then you could do mm-hmm. don't say do this say do do this <laughs> okay you can go on <laughs> <laughs> So I got a call from Bobby Moynihan, and he's just like, "Hey, um, I'm hosting this show for NBC. Um, we need we need a co-host, and they've mentioned your name." And I was like, "Fuck yeah, I love Ron. So let's get him." You em. said you love Ron. He Bobby said oh. he loves Ron, and so then um, I just show up. I just like sit on life like lifeguard chairs, and we would just put like kids 70 year old people retired nba player old and polonese we would so a 70 year old like grandma down these giant slip and slides it was the best job of my freaking life what's the concept what why do people want to watch this what's the it's like wipeout or the things like a competition series that is uh uh you know but with slip and slide and so it was super fun and then <laughs> the place that we were shooting was like this farmland and i forgot how to pronounce it i believe it's giardia sometimes i always mess it up uh but there was like poop parasites in, in all around and so then like, people got sick and then they tried to like, well, let's find another place to shoot it. And they couldn't. So they just canceled the whole show. We shot like we had shot most of the show. It made me feel so bad. But then I got this. So now I feel better. Oh, wow. You know, it actually made me think poop parasites is never a good thing. Mm-mm. And it's important to have a good, healthy bacteria and a good, healthy gut. And it's important to get all of your nutrition. That's why we at Take Your Shoes Off recommend Magic Spoon Cereal. Four flavors, peanut butter, berry, chocolate, and frosted. Whatever your heart's content is our desire. Magic Spoon, I enjoy very much. They 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 advertised my podcast once and then has not come back. So please come back. I, my wife actually now orders your cereal without me, and I actually have to pay for it. So I would prefer not to. Well, when your wife orders cereal and when you order cereal, make sure to go to magicspoon.com slash Tyso and use code Tyso for $5 off. With that, your Uber is here. Ron, <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, check out Diarrhea and Slip of Slides next year on Apple TV. Diarrhea Slip and Slides. And as always, Scoot Do, Bubbity Blue. <laughs> loan amounts will be determined by your credit, income, and certain other information provided by your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash Tyson. All right, so use that last version, but also cut the last... Cut... Well, we're... we're Right where Betty, well, cut you. You, sh- you show the show the empty room mic, uh, the empty. Oh, was Betty? Were you in front of the camera? I wonder. Where are you standing?